All right, all right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I am so, so excited to be here with all of you today. Uh, Wolf and I have just a wonderful, wonderful discussion lined up for all of you today. So thank you so much for being here. Um, just a heads up, I wanted to let everyone know that we're going to kind of give this presentation first and then we're going to answer your questions at the very end. So if you're watching this, you know, post the live stream just as a video, this will come off very much with a video feel so you can feel free to watch it uh, post the live stream. Those of you in the live stream, please do chat and uh, think of all the questions that you want to kind of come up with at the end. Um, and we'll try to answer as many questions as you can. We're going to be really, really diligent about answering as many of your questions. So yeah, thank you all for being here. And uh, with, that, with that being said, I'd like to introduce uh, Wolf of Thorns. Uh, Wolf is a content creator, YouTuber, Twitch streamer, and storyteller. So Wolf, thank you for being here. How you doing, man? Doing pretty good. Always a pleasure yeah, to be with you and the strategists. Yeah, it's great having you back, man. Uh, and so for those who don't know, this is going to be a monthly thing now. We're going to try to do one of these each month. Uh, the first thing we're tackling is each of these different groups. And today it's all about the Rattlers, um, a group that, you know, appears, you know, spoilers. If you haven't played Last of Us 2, you're going to want to do that because this is going to be total. A lot of spoilers going to go over everything. So um, definitely, definitely. Uh, give you the spoiler warning right there. So the Rattlers are one of the last groups that we meet, uh, but also in some ways, some of the more interesting ones, uh, I feel. So we're gonna get into that, but before we get into that, um, we just kinda, I just wanna kinda talk about, uh, Wolf, what have you published recently and what kind of projects are you working on? Um, oh yeah, so we've just been doing a lot of Twitch focus and uh, got uh, something special for Valentine's Day that we'll be publishing in just a couple of days. Just something fun. Oh, just nice. Something kind of nice. seasonal. Um, so uh, hopefully, you know, kind of get us all in the uh, Valentine's Day spirit and uh, a few laughs and just positive vibes uh, with the Last of Us theme stuff. And uh, yeah, just uh, enjoying the Twitch universe and finding our feet. Uh, but other than that, uh, just jamming out with you, T-Strat. Nice. And are you going to be streaming later today? Yes, sir. Right after uh, our live stream here. Oh, cool. Nice. Perfect timing. Perfect. 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 We'll be diving into some Death Stranding. Nice. Nice. Yeah. You did uh, Detroit Become Human the other day, right? Yes. I was blown away. It was my first playthrough. So lots of fun there. And a new kind of style of narrative game, which I'm so excited is out there and existing in the universe. Cool. Cool. Yeah. The, the only video that I'm kind of working on right now mostly is this fireside shot, which I'm probably going to drop this weekend. Um, it's looking like it's going to get done in time. Um, I have a couple other ideas of previous kind of uh, format videos that I've done as far as, uh, uh, I don't know, tunes with T-Strats and stuff like that. We're kind of like discussing music, but I kind of want to think of maybe a new way of, a new avenue of presenting them. So those are a couple of the things that I'm kind of working on. But uh, I'm very excited about your fireside chat. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's... It's going to cover a lot of really interesting topics. I think it's going to be uh, some ways really challenging for some people to watch and listen to, but I think it's ultimately a very, very important message. Um, and speaking of important messages, um, there was a HBO series update. So Craig Mazin got uh, extended with HBO for three more years, three more years. Yes. So for me, that tells me in my mind, I'm thinking that this is going to not just be like a one season, one off kind of thing, that there may even be like three, kind of like maybe a three season kind of thing. What do you what do you think? What are your thoughts on that? That's very telling. Yes, I think probably definitely two seasons because we've seen uh, and I love this, by the way, um, We've seen HBO series in recent years like True Detective and like Westworld take time off between, and not time off, they're just developing the next season until it's ready, kind of like a movie. Yes. Instead of just hitting a deadline, we, we got to have this out by fall next year. No. So if they're signing him on for three more years, then to me, maybe they're, they're already saying, hey, we pretty much know we want to start writing season two and three years would give him a chance to do the one and maybe then the other. That's just initial thoughts. Yeah, that's I that's yeah, that was kind of my thoughts as well. Um, I think it's just 
awesome. I, I I was really shocked that this wasn't like plastered all over the place. Like, hey, look at this huge vote of confidence and uh, really just laying down the foundation for a, a show that could go for a while. It was exciting. Absolutely. For me. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the first time hearing it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pumped. Yeah, it came out a, a week ago. I was just shocked. I'm like, why isn't everyone talking about this? This is, this is good, I, good news. The other thing, too, that we should be excited, and you've probably already mentioned this before, um, but since we're just talking about it, is just the fact that they are purchasing an entire season without a pilot. Like, that's how much confidence they have in the show. It's just That's amazing. huge confidence. It's true. Yeah. That is very true. Very true. All right. So that's going to kind of lead us to uh, the beginning of our kind of presentation discussion. Who are the Rattlers? And uh, if you would like to take the stage here and not mind kind of like sharing your thoughts on who the Rattlers are. Sure. So, yeah, I mean... The Rattlers, as we all know, most of us here, they're more or less uh, the baddest of the bad. Uh, I would probably say this pretty evil faction of these, you know, violent slavers uh, <laughs> that we meet towards the end of the game as the story brings us to Santa Barbara. Um, as we all know, they set up traps, they capture stragglers against their will, where they starve and, uh, you know, work these people to death by raising crops near this beautiful seaside mansion. Um, and I think I have a special appreciation for how the game actually introduces us to them by way of these, like, you know, these strange menacing warnings that we find, you know, first mm -hmm. by their, you know, threatening emblem of a skull intertwined with a rattlesnake that's left in several menacing places on Constance Avenue, you know, this graffiti. And then I think there is uh, maybe one mysterious letter uh, that names them in one of the houses. Uh, as well that you can find as Abby. So before we actually see or meet the Rattlers in person, we are warned of their presence. And to me, there's actually some really cool significant symbolism in that because that's how a rattlesnake actually warns people. Typically, before you even see the snake, uh, you're even aware that it's there in the grass, you're going to hear its rattle. So I thought this was just kind of great that the writers did this. If that was in fact their intention, it could have not been a great way to introduce us to this very dangerous and menacing group. And I don't know about you, but when I first saw that graffiti, it just kind of took me out of everything and gave me chills because yeah. we're in this place with the girls. We're in this place with Abby. We're in this place with her and Lev as they get here. And then suddenly there's this menacing emblem there and it's like, whoa, what is going on here? So very powerful impact for me. Yeah, I've, I've heard uh, one... One person, uh, a friend, kind of mentioned it. They said, uh, oh, it's the Rattlers because you hear the rattling of the chains, which hmm. I never even thought of. And I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. <laughs> like that kind of like blew my mind. Like that's a really, you know, the idea of slaver chains. Like, wow, that's really scary. <laughs> like that, wow. That'd be that's, enough to, that... to freak me out. Um, Absolutely. And the, the other thing is Santa Barbara is a really beautiful landscape. It's kind of, you have like this interesting... Um, kind of dynamic between you know this horrible, awful uh, hell. I believe in my video I called it you know a, a new land with the same atrocities. You know with the slaving colony, but yeah. uh, but it's 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 quite beautiful. Um, it it really really is. And I did visit uh, Santa Barbara this past uh, fall. And I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to say about the the No, I'm, I'm good on, on the intro for them. Yeah, and I, I'm kind of putting up some of the um, concept art here. And I, I really like how they kind of put their compound together, like the whole idea that there's a centralized compound. And there's this uh, picture here where it kind of almost depicts it, uh, it almost has like a Roman-esque kind of Coliseum feel to it. Right. Um, which... For me, which I'll maybe kind of get into later, kind of makes me think of these ideas of these these empire and this kind of like capitalistic kind of oppressive group. Um, but yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. But as far as uh, Santa Barbara goes, so I have some slides to share of when I visited Santa Barbara. This, this was back in, I think it was October. So yeah, this past fall. And awesome. I so can't I'm going to show here is like the in-game depiction of the train station. 
uh, and then I will show you the picture that I actually took. And you can just see like just how well they did like in capturing the essence of these places. And obviously, you know, they have to take a little bit of liberties with adjusting <clears throat> them so that they work in game. But I'm just always amazed at the work that these developers do with creating these environments that looks just oh wow there's the transit there's going to be a little bit of delay because i'm watching the yeah, live stream yeah absolutely but, whoa yeah. that's awesome <laughs> wow yeah it, it was it just felt really surreal to walk uh this these locales that are in game and just have this kind of feeling of whoa you know what it might be like in an apocalypse it was really really good <laughs> that was pretty good and I did, I did find Constance Avenue. Uh, obviously, the address, is, there is no address of you know twenty five hundred. Like it kind of has like east and Thank west. Thank goodness. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I, I can just imagine the poor person that lived at that, that lived at that spot, right? You know, have all these people come. Are the fireflies here? You know, <laughs> who, who the heck are these fireflies? They keep asking me about Donna. <laughs> I know. <laughs> And so, yeah, that that, that makes it. it's kind of like you know how every movie phone number starts with five five five, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that, I love you taking the picture of the street sign. Wow, that's gorgeous. Yeah, it's yeah. so cool. It's it's so fast. You know, I don't take it for granted. Just living in the day and age where you know this is video games are evolving. You know, I'm I'm a Super Nintendo kid. You know, being 12, 13 years old and just being mm -hmm. you know pulled into those games. And now you know you're showing me these pictures you took in Santa Barbara, and they're pretty much exactly you know what it is in the game except post-apocalyptic yeah <laughs> you know and it's just it's just uh, I never i always want to cherish that and never take that for granted that this is where things are going yeah and you you mentioned you have a friend that kind of like has seen similar things in seattle and i've been to seattle yes. a bunch of times it would be really cool to kind of like get um to get like photos and kind of do this compare absolutely yeah we can uh, uh pair you up with banana bell maybe do a live stream with you two guys and do your your own seattle uh, type of thing that'd be that'd be awesome that would be cool that'd be really cool all right well that's going to kind of lead us into our next topic which is going to be yes. the moral conundrum oh yes of... the darkest of places yes. that the rattlers take us so um the sit rep would be that we have this heavily armed you know dangerous group of slavers who are hunting innocent people and slaving them against their wells setting up dangerous traps all over the place and if the slavery part wasn't bad enough we know the living conditions are just bad 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 for several reasons and i kind of preface this and say this because yes they're slavers and losing your liberty is terrible but, you know, maybe they could take good care of their slaves, feed them at the very least. And it's important to note this before we go into the next bit, because we already know as the player, we've seen signs of those who, you know, kind of try to escape but fail, you know, would rather commit suicide uh, than, than go back to whatever hell exists inside this Roman Colosseum that you've shown us, mm -hmm. you know, and we know they play games with them and we know that they have the, un, you know, the, the infected chained up. Uh, and then what few survivors we have seen look like mummies, they're starved, beaten, thin. So the game is constantly telegraphing us that these are really, really bad guys. The worst of the worst to the point that maybe being enslaved by them is a fate worse than death for more reasons than simply losing one's liberty. So the interesting moral conundrum is you're a decent person, but you have a family. You want to protect those you love, even if it means killing your soul just a little bit to protect them. So what do you do? You're not a fighter. You don't know how to use weapons. You don't know how you would survive out there. And maybe your family has limited mobility. Maybe grandma can't get around too well. Do you try and continue hiding and avoiding these rattlers, wondering if the next day will be you and your family's maybe last day of freedom, not to mention the rattlers would probably kill any children or old people in your family? Or do you just try to reason with the rattlers by trying to join their cause if it means that your family would be protected by them. And while the game may not have addressed this issue directly in the narrative, I love, love, love that the writers left us clues that at least one survivor attempted and maybe even was successful at this approach. And that's the letter in the mansion that reads, and I'll just share it with you guys. I'll read it for you. Mm -hmm. 
Mom, I'm going to go talk to the Rattlers. I'm sorry I'm telling you like this, but I didn't want you to stop me. We're starving. We can't leave the area with you and Abuela like you are. It's only a matter of time before they find us. If I can join them, we could all be protected. I know this is scary, but I love you and I'm willing to do whatever I need to keep you both safe. Arnie. Yeah, it's so powerful. So, so powerful. Leave it to the last of us to take us to, <laughs> to a very dark place and then back again. So I just thought it was really this fascinating thing to consider, um, you know, when you're faced with uh, just trying to survive and protect the people you love. Yeah. And as you were mentioning this, I couldn't help but be drawn to Joel. And mm -hmm. the ideas of Joel with his family, you know, first protecting Sarah and that kind of, you know, how he lost a part of his soul and, and went to really, really dark places after that. But then he still had Tommy. He still had a shred of his family left, you know, and that, yeah. that's kind of like this theme that weaves th both through the first game and the second one, right? 100%. And uh, so if Joel did not have, you know, this family did not have sarah and did not have tommy what would he be would he be a rat right 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 as, think, as terrible as that is i think it's i think it's worth you know giving uh, some consideration it is and and definitely just that it kind of realistically takes us deep instead of just this black and white view at the, of things is, is is really cool it is it is and there's a second letter as well isn't there yes Ooh. yes there is um, so I actually, I can read that if you want. So we do find that other letter kind of inside the mansion um, that maybe is somebody that's already made that deal long ago, someone named Pat. And that says, Jenny, sending along some extra beef, grapefruit, and potatoes I just got. Uh, they've been impressed with how many strays I've captured and wanted to reward me. We're seeing the best crop we've had since we settled here. Please make sure my mom gets fatty cuts. She looked too skinny last time I saw her. Pat. Yeah, that's, I think that definitely does such a great job tying in that first letter and kind of seeing um, this kind of commerce or yeah. capitalism in a sense. Um, yeah. And I think uh, I'm going to get into that in a little bit, but it's, it's really cool. This kind of environmental storytelling, I think. Yeah. And, and this is pre this prevalent in both games, how some of the uh, most, I think, compelling or interesting stories are from people that we don't see. It's yes, just these... the off-camera narratives like Isha's letter and Boris and yes. all those beautiful stories. <laughs> it's true. And uh, speaking of Ish, I saw that you did, you kind of read his letters kind of like an audition so yeah, that was fun. It was. It was. Fun. I watched that. I liked it. Was fun. I don't know if you if you knew this, but two years ago I did a uh, loadout of Ish, like if Ish was in factions. Oh, that's awesome! And I I that read it. So cool. I read his letter in a, in a in an Ish kind of voice. I had him more with like a kind of like a southern accent, a little. Bit. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I love it. I, I love it. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go go in deep, do a deep dive. And yeah, find I this. saw that, and once again, I'm like, this is so cool that we're doing like similar things. That I had no idea. That's great. It's it's really good uh, synchronicity. I think that's the and that, and that's just creative to do an Ish loadout. Like that just gets me more excited about factions. It was so. it, it was amazing. I hid in the sewers, like the sewer part of the map, the whole time. Uh, I had like sewer mole man. Yep, yep. I had the shorty and the AR accidentally, accidentally dropped the shorty. It's a weird, super rare glitch that happens, but it was Ooh, it was wow. amazing. Yeah, and I ended up going flawless, so I never died. So like a true ish, I was able to hide. Like a and, true ish. Yep. Yeah. And survive. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I love it. Well, cool. Do you have any uh, any like final thoughts on? on this kind no. of like thing. I think you set this up really nice because this is really kind of a good root of what the Rattlers are about and how they kind of really interact with that region because they sure. clearly have this super strong presence and really put the onus on other people like, okay, this is a, a true dilemma here. You know, do you like try to have, I guess I'll say the word faith. Do you have faith that... I can approach these people and convince them that I'm worthy of saving, or am I just going to be enslaved? You're right. Yeah. Jesus. It, it's uh, and that's that's what uh, these apocalyptic games, what they really do is they take the core of things and put it right in your face. 
right? Right. There's no no messing about. It's just right there. Um, yeah. I'm glad they had the Rattlers in here. I, I think it's a yeah. really interesting, uh, different t- uh, style of group that we hadn't seen before in the Last of Us universe. Obviously, I think we've seen similar things in like The Walking Dead. And I'm glad mm-hmm. that they had the infected <clears throat> chained up and kind of using them as, you know, both protection and kind of, you know, you can use them as a lot of different ways as traps yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which I, I felt there had to be a group that would do that, would that would use the infected against other groups in, in this manner. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's really, really, really good. I, I'm always reminded of in the walking dead, there was terminus. I don't know if you've seen the walking dead and there's this, uh, mm-hmm. this group called terminus or like the, the okay. town. yeah. And it kind of, uh, it's supposed to be like the end of the road. It kind of had the same vibe a little bit with the rattlers because clearly we're nearing the end of the game at this point. Right. So you kind of right. figured, um, and there's definitely some uh, some connection that I'll get into in a little bit, and we'll go into there with the River Jordan. Um, awesome. Yeah. Excellent. And, and these uh, Rattlers kind of being the gatekeepers, being that they're slavers. But before we go there, I think we need to talk about the Rattlers on the radio, because I think this is a point that some people feel is like uh, up for debate. Sure. Yeah, 100%. So I don't know about UT Strat, but every few days or so, I get a comment on one of my videos about the Rattlers being the ones that were on the radio and that Catalina Island Firefly rumor yeah, like, uh, was just a yeah, trap or ruse. You yeah, know? that there's no Fireflies, it's just all the Rattlers, right? Right, that right. Kind of yeah. um, like it's this big you know, trap to capture unsuspecting Fireflies, wannabe Fireflies, all that kind of good stuff. And I think most of us here probably know that this isn't true, uh, and the, the game actually shows us this, but since there seems to be a great misconception and at least a certain portion of our player base about what actually happened, I just thought we might briefly cover that here since we're talking about them today. Um, and I, I do know that was, you know, it's funny that you're mentioning The Walking Dead because I do know that was a major plot device in 28 Days Later. Great yes. film, by the way, it, uh, yeah, Danny it, Boyle. It, in that terminus that was the whole thing with terminus is like they're like oh like come to us we're friendly you know they have right. these messages and stuff and so i think people just instinctively when they saw us like oh it's a trap like whenever they're right. they sound friendly it's a trap don't do it you know yes and i think in uh, 28 days later it was that military group that was luring people namely young women mm-hmm. uh to their location so i don't know if that contributes to the misconception um uh, and then, of course, they run into them when they when they escape the house. Um, but when we finish the game, as we all know, that main menu does show us that ostensibly Abby and Lev's boat has reached Catalina Island, which is denoted by its very iconic casino building that can be seen in the background. Mm-hmm. And Catalina Island is about 100 miles from Santa Barbara, based on what I saw on Google Maps. And if that's your neck of the woods, you probably know more about it. Um, uh, 100 miles away from the Rattler compound. So... To me, this was the storytellers letting us know 100% um, that that they made it. And while this may not be spelled out, you know, with lengthy dialogue or exposition, uh, the storytellers are essentially clearly telling us that Lev and Abby, Abby have made it safely. And I also like that this means the final scene of the game could in fact be said to be this new menu screen, which ultimately means that we are actually given a very hopeful ending, you know, and just like you and I have touched on uh, with the hero's journey, it gives them, you know, the right to live uh, uh, that, that we've talked about. Uh, and and there's a, a chance for them to begin anew. So Catalina Island is definitely about, to me, the return of the fireflies and certainly not about this, you know, kind of trick or ruse of the rattlers. And I just thought it was important to kind of point that out. Yeah, no, I think it's a great point. And there's, there's actually like two kind of things that for me really... Um, set in stone that idea that this was not a ruse and that this is in fact this this um, this whole new thing. I can call it like a new world or whatnot. So in the game, mm-hmm. there's this song, Wayfaring Stranger, which references crossing the River Jordan. Um, and the whole idea of crossing the River Jordan is uh, in the Jewish tradition, the Israelites had to leave uh, or escape Egypt from their slavers cross this dangerous river Jordan in order to get to the promised land. That was the final step. It's, it's a symbolism. 
It's the final step of the symbolism for freedom to finally take that final crossing this last dangerous, um, in this case, it's a river. And once again, even though it's the Pacific Ocean, I think you can easily make that parallel. And, yeah. Yes. And, the, and just the fact that it's the slavers and, oh man, and a new, you know, the promised land. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a pretty powerful connection. Yes. To be honest. And, and for me, the fact that the home screen changes shows that that has been completed. You're now changed. Right. Like the change has happened. Um, right. And as long as like, I mean, you can restart your game and stuff and do stuff, but as long as you keep that same profile, the, the menu screen will always be, you know, this showing that you have been changed or 100%. this has happened. Yeah. So that's one thing for me that was like, okay, yes, this is definitely Catalina Island, Fireflies, Promised Land, definitely a real thing. There is one other kind of uh, aspect, which I've mentioned before, is the Arthurian legend of Avalon. So that town where that uh, casino building lies is called Avalon. It's, That's awesome. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's just there's basically two towns on Catalina Island. Um, I'm totally blanking the name on the other one. It's got a it's like two harbors or I forget. It's some name like that. But basically, there's just two towns. But this is like the main town, Avalon, which in Arthurian legend, Avalon was the isle, the Isle of Avalon that Arthur went after this massive fight. He went there to heal, and it was kind of like his his promised land. Mm -hmm. And so. And I, the, the thing that really jotted my mind was when Neil Druckmann talked about this, he says they went to a round building, like they're going to this round building. He kept referencing the round building, you know, didn't, yes. didn't say it was Avalon, didn't say Catalina, just kept saying this round building. So the, anyone who's familiar with, you know, the Arthurian legend, he started this Knights of the Round Table. That's a, this really big, important symbol, because for him, he didn't want to be a king over his knights. He wanted to share with them, share in this round table where there was no head. He was very specific about this. We each have a part and a place in this society was his thing, um, which is just beautiful. It's a beautiful idea. And this whole round casino building made me think of that, that Lev and Abby Absolutely. went, you know, they finally crossed the River Jordan. They have their freedom and now they made it to the promised land where there is this round table where everyone has a say in the future. So that's what I kind of saw. That's um, pretty badass, to be honest. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, I could, it could be complete crap. You know, I could just be totally pulling this out of nowhere. But for me, it, it's a really, really strong symbolism. Um, and that's art, man. I mean, yeah. that's just this kind of divine Absolutely. connectivity to so many things. You know, um, it's just freaking awesome, you know. Absolutely. We can't sit here and analyze Super Mario Brothers like this, you know. No, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I do like Super Mario Brothers, but yeah, you're completely yeah. right. That you can't. There's there is nothing like that. All right. So uh, one thing that I want to do, I kind of I put it in the uh, description. I kind of called it, um, I don't know, comparative indoctrination. That was just kind of a weird name of. I kind of want to talk about the Rattlers and the Seraphites. Um, there's like there's two aspects of this that I really would like to discuss, and it kind of talked about Frederick Nietzsche's um, his book on the genealogy of morality, um, and kind of the morality of both the scars and the rattlers. And it might be seem weird to compare these two, um, but if you just give me a moment to kind of like elucidate this, then I think it'll make sense. Right so on. how each of these groups kind of recruit new members into the fold, we we are. This is kind of unveiled through these found letters, which you shared, right? You shared the ones that people who interacted with, with the Rattlers. This environmental storytelling, how these people's lives changed through these interactions with these groups. With the Seraphites, it's the same thing. We follow along this person who, over time, you know, he kind of like leaves his girlfriend, I think it is, um, to go to Scar Island to become um, a Seraphite. He has like a new mm -hmm. name and a new identity, everything at the end, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so Frederick Nietzsche kind of has like this master slave morality idea with master morality is they value like pride and power. The slave morality, they value kindness, empathy and sympathy. Mm -hmm. Master morality, they judge through actions as good or bad, whereas the slave judges based on good or evil intentions, kind of like, you know, religious terms. 
Um, sure. And Nietzsche felt that cultures, their language, codes, practices, their institutions are all kind of defined by this struggle between these two morality types, which I found really fascinating when you think of these two groups in particular. Um, you have the Rattlers. They're strong. So you have, they, they exemplify strength, power, exploitation, materialism. So that's kind of like this capitalistic side, right? And then you have right. the scars, which are idealism, belief, commune with nature, and then also service to the group, kind of this religious aspect. So they're in a way, they're kind of both these dark mirrors to the world, one being religion, the other being capitalism, but they both lead to this road where people pay the price for either way you go, right? Right. They both kind of lead to the same ruin, which I thought was just really interesting and then i thought about it in terms of abby and lev in their journey and so in those last those last scenes that last uh, chapter abby and lev were captured by the rattlers while they are on this spiritual journey trying to make it to catalina which we showed right yes and it's kind of the same way that capitalism can really like crush spirituality right um, right by turning people's lives kind of like this commerce of like, you must like produce, you must be providing some kind of material thing in order to live mm -hmm. or whatnot. Whereas Ellie, Ellie was not that, right? She was right. on this path of power and vengeance and she was able to overcome them um, by basically using their own wickedness against them, which, yeah. which I was like, man, you know, and once again, you know, Lev and Abby, they made it because of Ellie and ultimately yeah. Ellie, Ellie had to confront herself at the end right and she was not able to cross she did not cross the River Jordan freedom into the promised land Love and Abby made it she did not she went back right she still has work to do which um, sure. which uh, you know it's like when people say I had a comment that someone said that they thought the last of us part two ended perfectly and they don't want a part three I agree. I mean, I don't agree with that statement. I agree that that's, it's not over. There's definitely healing she needs to do. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it, yeah, the, the healing needs to be done. She didn't, she is just beginning the start of her kind of transformation journey, right? Yeah. Um, and not to mention that the biggest questions in the last of this universe haven't been answered. Like, yes. what is the fate of humanity? What is the fate of Ellie and her, her immunity? Like, what does her immunity mean in that yes. realm? super important questions that have not been answered so definitely part three um and 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 also as you know strats every time the last of us game comes out there's going to be a whole bunch of people be, that they're just like okay that's it there doesn't need to be no continuation it's just yeah. like they did with the first <laughs> know, game you know <laughs> the first one like no more like yep that's it, a valid point <laughs> yeah it, it's it, it is it is it's a very valid point and it's it's interesting uh there's a lot of people that still they couldn't move on um, yeah. th there was a, a Last of Us YouTuber that put together these really, really good, comprehensive Last of Us universe uh, videos, um, just went into good detail and lots of stuff. And he played the second one. And when Joel died, he said that he lost all his passion for The Last of Us and he couldn't he couldn't uh, continue with it anymore. And for me, like, I understand, like, his point and he explained it quite a bit, but I was like, oh man, like the last of us is more than just Joel. Um, yes, 100%. And, and I, I, I'm ready for the tales of a thousand human souls in this IP they've created. It's definitely not tied to these characters. Yes. And, and that's, that's one thing that I'm so glad that we're going to go through all these different groups because, yeah. and I think particularly in part two, there was so much that we wanted um, to hear more of these different groups, right? Yeah. Like, 100%. Uh, absolutely, like um, Seraphites. The Raven. Yeah. The, the Seraphites. I I could talk a very long time about the Seraphites. I find them very interesting. I think we didn't get nearly enough information on the Seraphites, so that right. is one that I'm really looking forward to talking about. I mean, I referenced them in this Rattlers just in the comparison here, but uh, yeah, there's just so much. And I'm going to say one more thing before we get to the the Rattlers demise, the end of the Rattlers, but. Um, I mentioned to you before stream, but last night I had I woke up just randomly, like actually this morning at 3 a.m. Just instantly 
zing awake completely like clear which for me rarely happens usually i wake up and i'm like oh gosh <laughs> like i feel like crap like you know like just let me sleep like two more hours um but no i woke up completely clear and lucid and i had this kind of like weird thought that the last of us part three would not be a story like single player story mode game but the entire last of us part three would be this shared collaborative co-op experience where you know millions of people have to work together in order for the story in the game to evolve and to complete in order to beat the game like everyone has to work together like right which that's I, amazing it sounds and crazy. the fact that you woke up at like this arcane hour 3 a.m with like that thought in your head you know if you're into any type of mysticism <laughs> that's like kind of cool i know, you know? It, it happens occasionally but it's just it was so clear I was just like, I, I'm like, oh, I got to tell Wolf about this so I don't forget it. Because, you know, sometimes you have these things and they just you yeah. don't talk about them. They just go away. But well, we, we already we already know that you're this transcendent monk. So the <laughs> fact that you woke up at 3 a.m. Hardly. Like, I sense the future. The new The Last of Us game where we are connected. Oh, dude, that's that's rad. Even if it doesn't happen in my head, Kenan, I know there's some type of multiverse where that's the game we got. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, because if you think about it, you think about The Last of Us Part Two, how it was really divisive because they made you see both sides of the coin, so to speak. You know, now sure. you're playing as Abby, which I think for many of us, you know, we ended up loving it, right? That's our favorite part of the game is like, man, yeah. that like journey of her, her spiritual journey is just amazing. It's so good. You know, it feels so much more rewarding than... Um, Abby Day 2. Yeah, than uh, Descent into, uh, you know, just everything. Ellie's just Descent into following Joel's footsteps and sure. being unable to uh, do that. But uh, regardless... Um, this idea that now the literally the entire community has to work together in order for this game to complete or proceed um mm -hmm. that's like taking that last game to the next level <laughs> yes like, absolutely like, like especially after part two how divisive it was like okay right. guys like you need to like make this happen like that i part of me just thinks that would be amazing yes. i think it'd be super difficult i mean it would be quote unquote ambitious it'd be the most ambitious game ever to try to like make oh that you know it's going to be ambitious it's just what is it going to be ambitious about they always they're always breaking barriers with they're the last of us games yeah so but i would love to play this version you describe yeah yeah it was just i don't know i because i always have thought of like you know you have like this separated multiplayer and in, in story mode you know because obviously with the story things need to be a little more controlled so you can get your message across but sure i don't know Part of me just thought of this i'm like wow that would be that'd be something <laughs> that'd be watching the future with great interest yeah <laughs> <laughs> star wars reference <laughs> yeah uh, all right and that leads us to um the final the rattlers twilight the end of the rattlers and i love this image that you selected here it's so good so, oh yeah so good. yeah the, man the concept the concept art uh santa barbara oh my gosh oh it's so part good. of my heart is left in the west even though i may be in texas i long to return to california in any case so with the end of the rattlers it's safe to say that uh probably more than most of the factions uh, that we've been introduced to in the world of the last of us I, in many ways the rattlers probably made more enemies than most which is probably why it's kind of ironic or cosmic that karma does not come for the rattlers inadvertently because of what they've done but merely because they were in between ellie and her end goal uh, mm -hmm. which is very interesting to me um so as we all know ellie shows up and it, and you know it's it's kind of the the rattlers doom as it turns out you know to be with uh that awesome Black Angel song, uh, Young Men Dead, I think, blasting on the yes. courtyard speakers, <laughs> which I love because it married two of my favorite things, True Detective Season 1 and The Last of Us. Um, uh, I, I actually, I'm a huge fan of Black Angels. I identified it awesome. immediately. I've seen them live yeah. multiple times. Oh, wow. I know. When I heard oh, that, I'm like, holy crap, they got the drop. Black Angels in here. I was did, your, like, did, did your jaw just drop when you're did. approaching the courtyard and you're hearing that song? It did. Yeah. That yeah. was me. I just got chills and it and it just matched the tone of everything going on. I was like, this can't be happening. But uh, 
I guess, I mean, we don't technically know 100% that the Rattlers were finished, but I think it's a safe bet since Ellie pretty much kills most of everybody in there and then she releases the slave, gives them access to the armory to finish off whomever's rest. So uh, it's just kind of this uh, humorous point. I know it seems all melodramatic, but just this kind of humorous thought that I that I have uh, these last few playthroughs when I've been entering the Rattler compound, I, I always thought it was funny that there's this letter you can find as Ellie right before you go into the compound. And mm -hmm. uh, here I have it here. I'll just read it for you guys real quick. Hey, Rattlers, it's Mackenzie. I'm out free. My husband died picking your effing tomatoes. We aren't some lonely stragglers. I will be back with others. Your time is coming. So <laughs> with that letter, I always just thought it would be funny to imagine Mackenzie and, you know, whatever group she's allied with that she's connected with just showing up on mass. They're all armed to the teeth to bring their own day of reckoning to the Rattlers. They're like, you know, cocking their shotguns. And they show up and there's just like crickets and there's like blood stains all over the wall. There's like dead Rattlers. They're like, what the heck happened after Ellie arrives and just <laughs> showing up and they're all dead. And, yeah. you know, just so being this know. kind of. <laughs> Someone beat us to the punch. <laughs> yeah. I just, every time I, I read Mackenzie's letter, I just imagine this group of like 50 people because they picked the wrong person to enslave and she got out and lost her husband. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like, no, our girl Ellie got there first. And they were simply in between her and what she was trying to do, you know? <laughs> yep. And I think they're uh, definitely, they're done. Um, I've replayed yeah. that last scene last night. And if you play it with really good headphones, I mean, shout out once again to Rob Kreckle and his audio team. Heck yeah. Yeah, that after that whole walk through what I call the Garden of the Gethsemane, um, that whole thing, and you go through that that corridor that, which will be the uh, the Q and A this this corridor here, if you can see on screen. After you walk through there, and you see like the fire, if you can if you have um, really good audio, you can hear people like like yelling like oh like they're out like the, the slaves are out and then they're like oh, yeah and they're freaking out and there's explosions gunfire and it's just it's just chaos after that and you can you can literally hear like okay yeah like the rattlers are they're done. done they're done <laughs> they're, done. they're yeah. done they are done yeah and so i i think that's definitely a thing the rattlers are oh. are, are finny so to speak um, i love and, this shot you have of that hallway I love that hallway that hallway and is so good i want to say in our last stream you revealed the connection and you've probably revealed it before but just the, your connection of that to the saint mary's hallway and i'd never considered that before mm -hmm. and i even mentioned that too when i was live streaming and again after our last uh, joint live stream that i was mentioning to them what you referenced here and i just think that's definitely what they were going for and i just i love how we just keep seeing things yes you know? yes it's it was so powerful because once again it was for me it was kind of like a uh i don't know a, kind of like a spiritual thing right like mm -hmm. this whole like descent and just when you finally see that the pillars, you know, where you're going to see Abby, it's just like so powerful for me. Like yeah. one of the most powerful parts in gaming ever. I'm like, man, yeah. like, how does this game exist? Like so good. So good. Deep, I'm so glad we, we, we live in the, uh, yeah, we live in the reality where this game happened. Exactly. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I was going to say that, like, I am so glad this game got made. I know it's divisive. I know for some people it's very challenging, sure. but holy hell, it's so good. And yeah. it's to actually have a game where you can have these kind of themes and stuff and even just hint at this deeper symbolism, whether or not it's there, whether it's just purely interpretation or not. You know, That's that art, does baby. happen. Sometimes you find amazing inspiration in the most unlikely places. You know, that right. is that is life. That is life on this journey. Um, and, and the other thing, too, that we got this game and then what future games is this game inspiring the next generation's creators to make that there are no limits. Absolutely. To, to how you want to tell stories about the human condition. I agree. You know, I agree. Because I felt people for a while felt like games had kind of like lost, like there hadn't been any new kind of like format or structure that, you know, I think people thought that games hadn't had lost some creativity and it was just like, they're just like remaking stuff and the multiplayers are all battle royale. And, and then, you know, like last of us part two comes out and it really changes things. I feel yeah. it changes things strongly. And I know you as a storyteller, you appreciate the whole medium and you talked about how, for you, games really transcended um, 
movies in this sense. Yeah, it's definitely the next stage. Okay, and that speaking of next stages, that leads us to the Q and A. All right, people, right on. Let's hear your questions. Go ahead and send them in fast and furious, and we'll try to answer as many as we can. What's up, Mr. Tennis? What's up, Ash? Mad Matt? Thank you guys all. Cool Kids channel. <laughs> yes, yeah, bad draw. Um, Schmidt Barrett, thank you guys for all being here. You guys have been so patient letting us get through this presentation. I know it was like 45 minutes long, um, but thank you so, so much for doing that. Um, so now we can interact and connect with you guys directly. So fire away. Let's hear these questions. You may fire when ready. You do that so well. <laughs> <laughs> Good office catch of the day. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look back up and see. I'm sure there's some probably questions. Yeah, and there's probably a slight delay for me, mm -hmm. perhaps. Oh no, I guess I am seeing it live. Just maybe our voices are coming in a little bit. Drink. Cool Kid Science Channel says, "Do you think this game is nihilistic?" Oh, uh, I think not at all. I really yeah. don't. I would say it's the opposite of that. It tries yeah. to put deep meaning into so many different aspects of life especially yeah, in a, a post-apocalyptic environment it's rife right. with meaning really uh what, what do you think no i i definitely do not think it's nihilistic i mean to me it, it really forces us to confront um the uh, cause and effect of revenge cycle what it does to yourself and you know and and just to deeply viscerally examine that and it gives us a hopeful ending, and a nihilistic tale would not. Yeah, agreed. Emerson Nash, actually Emerson and Ash William says, I could listen to you all day talking about my favorite game, and you guys have a nice deep voice. I did get a Rock message. <laughs> I think I got a message like, I, li I really liked your guys' uh, co-stream. You know, you guys have like the two sexiest voices <laughs> in the last of us. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah. uh. Thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Corey Caliber says, no question, but just want to say you guys are two of the best content creators out there. The fact that you preferred that your preferred subject is The Last of Us is just a bonus. Great conversation and thank you. Big heart. Oh, thank you, Corey. Right back at you. Darius, do you think Jacob Marley and the Muppets Christmas Carol was the Rattlers both his chains and warnings about not changing to Scrooge? That, you know what? I I do love um I mean the Christmas Carol the Dickens. Uh I yeah. do like the the Jacob Marley character. Um I don't yeah. think they were going for that, but I would totally see that. I mean that's yeah. I mean this and, whole yeah, go ahead. I would say this whole game's about say, change. It's about change. Changing and failure to not change. What happens? What happens when you don't change? 100%. What happens when you can't forgive when you are unable to forgive and you are unable to change? What happens? Well, I guess you kind of chain yourself, right? Like Jacob Marley. 100%. You shackle yourself. And so. I love the Muppet Christmas Carol. So <laughs> let's see. Do you, how do you think the multiplayer will turn out? I think it'll turn out great. I think it's going to be completely different than most people are expecting. Um, I can't wait. In certain ways. And I think that'll be a good thing. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think they're taking their I time. I suck at multiplayer it. games, but I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well that's the thing i i honestly feel that if it is a more story co-op experience it'll be less about just who's good at like skills and more about exploring and being strategic and thinking of how you want to create your community or your environment which is great right on i think that's awesome also that's way more inclusive than who is the sweatiest person who spends all day practicing, you know, quick scopes? Sure. And, you know, it's like you can do that for so long, but at, to a certain point, that's just it is what it is, you know. And uh, I really like something that's more inclusive that more people can get right involved. On. Is Jesse's son going to get revenge on Abby? JJ, I'm talking about JJ, Javier Felix. Thank you for your question, Javier. Uh, I, I doubt it. I really don't think so. I yeah. I also doubt it, Javier, because um, that would just be kind of repeating Red Dead Redemption 1, you know, to, to me. Um, Plus, yeah, yeah. In, my, in my video, you know, Why Did Naughty Dog Save a Cat? I have JJ as like the first of us. He's like the first of a new generation sure. that is going to be able to. Also, it's hard to feel 
I mean, it could be, but also, you know, if you didn't have this father, it's kind of hard to feel the deep, deep emotional connection that like Ellie felt towards Joel because I mean, he was gone. Yep. Yeah. That's so. true. Firegirl says, just want to say game is masterpiece, but thank you both for making it so much interesting content and discussion about the topics in general. Thank you, Fire Girl. Thank, thank you, you thank Fire you. Girl. Yeah, right back at you. Right Fly, would either of you like to elaborate where you see Abby's inclusion in part three? That's a good question. Um, Wolf, do you want to go first? Oh, sure. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, basically just like where it left off and a lot of the awesome points that Strats touched on, you know, it's a, a whole new beginning. You know, she's been to the darkest places and she finally found the light again uh, with the fireflies. So I definitely think she's going to try and just rebuild uh, the fireflies, you know, be a part of that, uh, paving a way to the future. I think she's probably overcome the darkest things she'll ever have to face in her life. And it's a, a really hopeful beginning for her to try and rebuild. And, uh, and I, I go into some more details about her specific role that I would like to see in, in, in a part three if I was pitching the story on my channel. Yeah. And I know we both kind of like talked about this last time in our part three discussion, as well as the videos we made on part three. Um, I definitely see Abby playing a really significant point uh, part Me too. in part three. Uh, Me too. But I don't see her as being like a main playable character, which I know. Oh, I oh go, you go ahead. Yeah. No, 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 you go ahead. You go. <laughs> uh, which, I, which I know is kind of controversial, but I really don't. I see it kind of going back to the fundamental question of Ellie and her immunity being like the primary mm -hmm. focus. And and you could be very, very right. Uh, I would, st I, I would still love to, to be continue playing Abby and, and Ellie and, and, and it'd just be great, but maybe that's just a bit of the fanboy in me. <laughs> no, it's good to have some fanboy. <laughs> we, either way, we both want a uh, bill. We both mm -hmm. want bill DLC. Bill. Oh yeah. They could, you know what? They could just sideline all that Ellie and, and Abby stuff and just make that bill game right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, the, that's that's the big reveal the uh, big reveal is that oh dude it's all about bill <laughs> yeah part three. can't wait uh keeg says uh with the rattlers seeming a smaller faction introduced do you think if part three is made that they like to introduce uh new smaller factions i want to see more of the world damn it i know keeg's we we definitely want to see more of the world even though this game is twice as long as the first you know over yeah. 30 hours if you really take your time um, we still want more. And I, I in the video I, that I kind of put out for my part three suggestions that how Naughty Dog saved the cat, um, I definitely saw new factions being introduced. Ones yeah. that know of Ellie's immunity and are trying, they're vying for it for their own nefarious purposes. Um, yeah. So I, I do see thought. that. Yeah. That's uh, a very chilling thought. Darius says, Absolutely. Why do the Rattlers have such strong branding? <laughs> they do. They have they, they, they're they're simple. Great PR person. Great. They have great PR. <laughs> yeah. They. Uh, I'm. I think out of yeah out of all the branding, theirs is definitely the best. I think the WLF could have been better. There's there's could have been a better branding. I really do. I do feel sure. that way. Seraphites is a little more mystical, a little more um, abstract, but yeah. That's good, Pisces. Yeah. That's a good question. You guys said it was the Rattlers pretending to be the Fireflies. They asked Abby about which Firefly she was based at. Yeah, I mean, that we were just kind of like responding to questions we get of people saying that there is no mm -hmm. Fireflies. It's just, and so we were just putting forward some uh, information about stuff that really denotes that it's not. Do you think it's going to be way more like the faction multiplayer or Uncharted type? Uh, I think it might have a factions kind of component, but I think it'd be, I think it's gonna be very different. I think it's gonna be co-op story based as the main aspect. It doesn't mean they can't have a factions mode where it's PVP mm -hmm. like they currently have. Um, right. But I think when you say ambitious and you take your time with it, then it's going to be significantly different. Just my ideas, my thoughts. Thank right you, Halox. Yeah, I would love a co-op mode too. We've Tron says, how do you feel about Tila 3 starting at the beginning? Ellie's parents were doing a gain of function research on cordyceps fungus, testing how cordyceps jumped from humans. That's how Ellie is immune. That is a good, good question, good Weave Tron. And yeah. I know a YouTuber um, who hasn't really done much stuff lately, but Fun with Rio had this idea that Ellie was kind of born in a lab and that's the reason why she's kind of immune. And there is some good kind of evidence that kind of suggests that that could be the case. I mean, Ellie's mom was a nurse 
um, mm-hmm. and she believed very strongly in their cause. Uh, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out that Ellie, that her immunity was, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of uh, engineered. Engineered, yeah, manufactured uh, by the fireflies. I think that's an awesome plot idea for me personally. It's a bit high tech yes. for the grounded kind of theme, the kind of ruggedness. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still think that's a really, really great um, idea and a, and a great concept to consider. It, I, I like it. I do. I like it as well. I also, the one thing I don't like about it is that Ellie is kind of like this mystical chosen one and it kind of takes sure. a little bit of that away right right it's kind of like i don't know divine providence or whatever you want to call it and kind of dovetailing on that halox asked do you think we'll ever meet someone else's who is immune so um in my pitch i, I talk about another immune person and that person kind of being a villain but the only reason why i introduced that that person at all is just to be a red herring because you would never want someone that could take away the gravity of where Ellie's path probably most ultimately has to end with her own agency. But I, I would never want to see just to satisfy, you know, a fantasy of a, a perfect ending or, or something like that. Uh, a, another immune p- person just kind of show up to kind of take that away. I would only ever use it uh, in kind of like a red Sorry. herring type thing. So at the last minute, you realize the only choice could be Ellie. Mm-hmm. And that's just my personal feelings on it. Yeah, I like that. I do. Uh, let's see, Firefly. How do you guys feel about a possibility of a strain of cordyceps that is mutated to allow for a higher level of sentience with the human host? That is such a good question. That's awesome. That <laughs> would be crazy. Like that yes. would be that would be crazy. That really would. That's a good question, Firefly. Um, I could see that. I really could see that. I could too. That that would that would be that would add a whole new level of fear um to to everything going on <laughs> it would uh gs mind do you think santa barbara felt out of place like the game was trying to go too far um you know what i was shocked when we got to santa barbara I'm like holy crap how long is this game like are we going on this whole another thing i i was shocked right. because it was so the environment was so different from you know the wet soggy dark uh seattle that we spent most of the game you know right basically the environment where i live most of the time <laughs> Um, but I, I have been to Santa Barbara. And so for me, like, it was kind of, I was kind of like, oh, cool. I know Santa Barbara. I want to check this out. <laughs> like I was really interested in, in seeing Santa Barbara. And I kind of yeah. like the fact that it's so shocking, like that it, the environment is so different, um, is kind of like really like crossing this threshold kind of feeling, which I kind of liked. I yes. really did. When you walk out of the boat and you're like, holy crap. Yes. And, then, and you're with, you know, uh, Abby and Lev and they're walking down the street and they're like, trying to find this firefly house i was really stoked about it i, I me, it. me too me too when uh, when i saw california I, I i for one everything that get the game kept doing at different thresholds uh like right when we shift to abby for the first time or when we shift to the homestead the farm and then again when we get to santa barbara my immediate reaction is oh my god there's so much more of the game left oh my god and, and, in a good way because my only criticism of part one and it really isn't a criticism. It's just that I wanted it to last for, you know, 100 hours and it was only like 14. Yeah. So, but seeing California as a Texan, I love seeing California and, and this world ruined, you know, old, you know, collapse of society. So for me, I, the more the merrier, the more different uh, locations, whether it's the United States or other parts of the world, the more the merrier for me because I know Night Dog is going to serve it up. It's true. Yeah, they, they do a good job with world building. I mean, we just want more. I mean, that's the thing. Like they yes. give us like really quality bits, and we just want more of that. Right? More, more. <laughs> I know. It's it's, it's 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 a good it's a good thing. Mister Tennis says, uh, "Do you guys think we will be getting more in depth gaming experiences that moved the media like The Last of Us that went deeper into the people, etc." Yes. Yeah, I could see that happening. I mean, every time you raise the bar, it gets tougher and tougher to do it. Right. So onwards and upwards i think i think it's good to like take a moment right now and also like just uh realize the personal sacrifices that most of the devs and the team went to make this game happen um i'm not going to like name anything specifically but just things that i've heard this this game was a huge 
uh, passion project. These people put so much effort and blood, sweat, and tears literally into this game to make it happen. Yeah. And so um, I know it's gotten the the more you know commercial accolades, game of the year, game of the century, game of the universe, whatever. Mm -hmm. But just on a purely human level, the people that made it happen really put a lot into it from themselves. And so I think it's important to recognize that. So 100%. to ask, the, and, and that's the thing, what studio could make a game like this? And I think as the more and more we continue, I think people are realizing that there is not many on this earth that could make a game like this. More and more of these studios are kind of like struggling to make a game of this quality. Um, yeah, it's not as easy as it, as it sounds. And they spent seven years on this. It's a long time, so yeah. a very long time. How many projects? I, uh, how many projects in your life have you spent seven years on? Right? Yeah, exactly, one hundred percent, and the the manpower as well uh, for those seven years. But I like to think about, you know, for everybody that puts some signature of their soul into this game, just the infectious kind of positive mm -hmm. inspiration as it spreads out the diaspora of this game's energy. Again, just inspiring the creators of tomorrow, inspiring the storytellers, and inspiring the storytellers of today. So that, that's what I like to think about. You know, what mm -hmm. games will we see just in the next decade that were definitely impacted and, you know, as some type of positive outcome from this? Yep. I agree. That is... Yeah, the, the game really, like, took the whole conversation to the next level. Absolutely. Um, no question. Let's see. Matthew Palacios. Will it like be a co-op mode in Last of Us because the leaks, there's a mode called... Uh, I think most likely. I think most of us, there's going to be some kind of co-op story mode. Definitely. Uh, how are the Rattler's scars contrasted with Bill and his loneliness? I do like that. I do... I, even though I know Bill is there to kind of like be like a forewarning to Joel, like this is what happens, you know, like if you like get attached to someone and you, you kind of like go wallow in this, this loneliness by on yourself but i do like that he's kind of this rugged individual who is mm -hmm. who is really i he's he's a complex character i i love bill in the last of Us part one because he is not a typical character you find and there's i feel like there's a lot of truth in what he says and yes you have to go through the coarseness and the callousness and his bitterness but you can tell that deep down he's someone who feels really really strongly um, mm -hmm. and for me that speaks volumes I mean like the way that he cries when he like sees the letter like really suddenly yeah. like, he's really quick to snap out and like get that hard bill coming back really quick but yeah. um, that is something that I feel is really rare in games um, yes I love his, his expression of anger his expression of you know just I don't know. Just his his strong, strong individualism is is really good. I like it. It's it plays a very important role in this game, and it's something we don't see a lot of. We see all these groups because once again, being a, a you know a lone bill is a, a difficult proposition in a post apocalyptic world. And I, I think one of the fascinating things they could do with a B a B a build DLC is. Um, actually not really have many other survivors in it at all I mean, and just see how entertaining that is as you really kind of get into the isolation of protecting this town setting up traps little quests here and there as you you know you're just kind of sustaining yourself and all the while bill's just muttering and talking to himself and it's so entertaining and so immersive it and kind is. of pulling us into that solo experience you know it is and then they can surprise us by having bill uh joel and tess show up yeah I agree. Yeah. And that, that whole Bill thing, it, it is like, for me, it's a bit of comic relief that is, yeah, that is absent, I feel like, in a lot of Last of Us Part Two. I know, like, yeah. Dina, they try to add some of that comic relief kind of uh, dynamics to it. Um, but with Bill, they just nailed it. It, it was good. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> this guy's freaking crazy. <laughs> but I love I'm it. I'm excited because I, I hope it. we see, uh, I hope we see Earl in the show reprising his role as Bill. Absolutely. I, I agree. I would love to talk with W.O. Brown about yeah. his Bill. I think that'd be great. He just seems like such a cool dude. Really, Just really reach cool. out to him, man. Yeah, I think we will. Um, let's see. More questions. What we got here? Uh, Tofo, 
Hi guys, what would be the difference between the new Fireflies and the old ones? I'm not expecting the same ideology and behavior. Oh, thank you. Yeah, congrats from Italy. Thank you, Toby. That is an excellent, excellent question. Because the the new Fireflies, right, are definitely not going to be the same as the old. The old ones are gone and done. And I do like this idea of the Fireflies evolving into a new group. Um, Wolf, what do you... I, I feel like you probably have some really good ideas on this. Um, well, for, for me, I mean, I think it's just like anything. I think it's just like any group. And I don't know if you guys, uh, if people here have read A Song of Ice and Fire... It's mm -hmm. George R. R. Martin's uh, novels that the Game of Thrones show is, is based on. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and what I loved about reading those books is sure, you, it kind of paints the broad strokes of, you know, these are the Starks, these are the Lannisters, this is that, and they, and they have huge armies. But what it showed was once you have these forces and you break off into little groups where you got a sergeant controlling these soldiers. I mean, people are people, man. There's going to be war crimes on every side. There's not a single army in that, and I was going to say in that game, <laughs> in that series that didn't commit war crimes, that didn't rape, that didn't pillage because, the, you know what I mean? So when we see the little sides of the fireflies where you get into the, the Wyoming Museum, you know, the animal exhibits and the guys painting on the walls, that's not fair. It's not fair to lay that at the feet of the fireflies. Did they do some bad stuff? Yes, they did, but I mean, I think you're going to have those people like Jerry and like Marlene who are there. They're pledged to the core tenets, you know what I mean, of mm -hmm. restoring the government and, you know, restoring democracy and, of course, finding a cure. And yet you're also that's why you have special forces and things like that. The, the type of things that the, the public really doesn't have the heart to understand that once you're dealing in this world, you're going to have to do some things that are, are going to take part of your soul. You know, so I don't personally see that the new fireflies have to be different, uh, just serving the same tenets. But that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, everything in this world uh, has to change. It's basically you change or you die is kind of how I see yeah. see this really. And, and and you can even say in some ways, like Bill, his reluctance to change even though he's physically still alive, that spiritually he's dead, right? Some people can say right. that he's just Very like, true. he's a broken man, you know, and he's just wallowing away in this town, you know, just living for who knows what. But that's one view, but I don't completely agree with that because uh, I really have a lot of hope for Bill. But once we keep going back to Bill, but uh, with the Fireflies, I could see their whole ideology just changing slightly and i'm not gonna like go into it right now how i st typically see it completely changing but i think it'll True. be definitely different less uh idealistic than it was before um oh, I don't... but <laughs> i know but i i my I, heart i could no i think it'll still be good i think it'll be like a more truer um representation that they can all kind of get behind and really um, embrace and I think they could serve a really important role in the conclusion absolutely awesome in I'm relation excited. in relation to Ellie um, but that's that's to be expanded upon in a different day uh, Pitbull speaking of you mentioned governments uh, do you think Fedro will ever resurface and I really like this question because um, it really there's and I think you actually Wolf did you mention this in your most recent video about how each of the different Fedra zones uh, kind of became their own thing. There was no unifying yeah. connection between them. Yeah. No central government to drive them. Yes. We see that through all, all the different major cities. In Seattle, you see the Fedra stuff everywhere, you know, right. and, and they kind of have some really small environmental storytelling of how that Fedra um, fell. But I think there's these ideas that there are these other Fedra locations that maybe were far more successful in how they end up managing that and i would like to see a i don't know you call it successful but just a surviving fedra location that maybe did things differently i would like to see that and i think in the hbo show that's something they can really get into to a far more um deep degree i don't know how, I how think do you feel about phaedra yeah go ahead uh, so for me i think um i think you're what you propose is very interesting and i've done well that that'd be really cool to check out for me personally i think fedra should be gone. I think it's more realistic, you know, 25, 30 years after a collapse of society. Um, I see that all going away. And I mean, it's all the new groups. It's all the new ways, you know, humanity for better or for worse, you know, because the Seraphites probably control Seattle now. Um, 
you know, that these types of groups are going to be, you know, residing over the little pockets of humanity that are thriving here, there and everywhere else, just like the Jacksonites. I, I don't think it's likely that the last vestiges of a militarized government would continue to persist and endure. But that's just my, my thoughts on it. Plus, I think new factions are more interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be like the Fedra, like the Boston one. It would be this whole new thing. It would... I'd, my idea it, it may even have like a new name but it, maybe it was like the fedra that kind of involved evolved into this Ooh. new thing you know but like it still has this kind of hierarchy um i think there's some fun stuff that can be done yeah. yeah and maybe you know like you could see these characters having to go to them for something uh maybe it is that they have maintained this really intensive quarantine zone that still has a functioning lab who knows wow you know that's just one idea but we could talk about this all day uh let's see this. <laughs> yeah, we could. New, new new question uh jeremy allison do you think part three could feature dina jj with ellie mixed in um i don't really see that being like the central focus yeah jj's so young i even if it's like you know 10 years later if he's like a teenager i i yeah i don't i, I think it, yeah I, I think it's a testament to the storytelling they give us in every game, in every game. We're still talking about Bill. We're mm -hmm. still talking about Dina and JJ. Uh, we're still talking about Ish. We don't even see him. Yeah. You know, we're still talking. We love Tess. Uh, maybe we don't talk about her so much because we know she died. But to me, if you extrapolate that, that tells you that they have the goods to tell us stories about any new characters and we're going to feel as invested in them we don't necessarily need to cling to all all of these other characters but to answer the question directly i think you know we might see dina briefly but i don't see mm -hmm. kind of like uh, what t-strat says i don't think it, it would be a core of that story yeah i love that you brought up tess last of us does not happen without tess no. um i think so many people forget you know that joel did not want to even touch no. like taking Ellie anywhere didn't even want to be near her just like nope he's like I want to go nope. home drink my whiskey and <laughs> wallow in my sadness yes <laughs> it was Tess that yes. literally said hey hey jerk face you know you're yeah. gonna do this I this is my dying wish you're gonna do this and yes gonna, you know it's like she's like forced him to do it absolutely forced him which I love beautiful she, moment it was she was she was beautiful. the catalyst it wasn't Joel Joel yeah. needed a huge kick in the ass, and he she's got it. the boss lady for a reason. Yep, it's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's great. Let's see. Um, Ahmed says, "Will Last of Three come out? And if yes, what do you think it's going to be about? More Ellie or Abby? Uh, oh, thank you. Um, yeah, we kind of touched on that quite a bit. Um, I think it's definitely for me. It's going to focus on Ellie, mostly mm -hmm. with definitely Abby playing an important role." But uh, yeah, <laughs> that's that's my. I mean, we we have plenty of videos that we've kind of talked about that to mm -hmm. um, to further. What state locations would you like to see in part three? You'd love to see more of Cali or Texas, maybe in Joel's original home. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Wolf, what do you what do you think about yeah. uh? <laughs> going yeah, back I to actually. Home? Yeah, mentioned that in the my The Last of Us three pitch. That'd be a great way to kind of in it and not in an end to the Last of Us games because I could think they can tell us a million stories here, but in an end to an Ellie trilogy to kind of tie the end to the beginning. I, as I pitch in my Tlu three story that I would pitch to Night Dog if if I was writing for them, um, would be her actually visiting the home uh, right before she goes into surgery of her own will because it's something she wants to do and of course i would love to see more of texas and to actually play some of the uh the desert uh, uh biomes uh, even if it's not in texas i'd love to see some unique takes on cordyceps in louisiana uh, how does that change cordyceps in the desert biomes all over the united states would be great to see how the fungus evolves and changes and gives us different infected um what Definitely. about you Keith? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, I love that idea of going back to Austin. I yeah. really do. And we, even just Ellie just being like, oh, wait, I'm, I remember Joel saying that he's from here and like going into and just seeing like these locations that we saw in the very first game to really bring it all back after that huge journey. You know, just yes. those, the same way that, I mean, it's different because it's not Joel coming back, but the same way that 
in any kind of journey story when you have um, like Frodo and Sam come back to the Shire after everything they did yeah. in the Lord of the Rings. It's the same place, but it's completely different because the place hasn't changed. You've changed, right? Yes. So that's yes. I, I like that. I do like that. And for maybe Ellie, it's going back to Boston, you know? Who knows? Sure. You know, I, I'm just spitballing here, but I know that's where she's kind of from. But uh, I would love to, to go back to Texas. I think it was. I do like the idea of like desert environment uh, infected. That could be really interesting. Mm -hmm. That could be really, really interesting. Um, yeah. Oh, Angel Martinez, some news about factions too. Uh, let's see. Do I have, I think I have a meme for that. Shit, I don't fucking know. Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy does not know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we talked about the multiplayer quite a bit. Um, but uh, no new news. But I do honestly feel that we're going to get some things sooner than later. I know I've said that for a long time, but it's just a matter of time. I mean, you can talk about rumors and stuff all you want. Sure. Uh, there's tangible evidence that they've been working on for a very long time. As far as like rumors and stuff goes, there's one insider that was like Naughty Dog, or not Naughty Dog, but Sony is holding on to this massive multiplayer and they're not revealing it. Um, and they're not sure why they've taken so long in revealing it. That's the rumor that is out there, um, but eventually they will. And we kind of talked about this um, wolf beforehand. And part of me thinks, you know, it's like, oh, PS5s, people don't, a lot of people don't have them. There's a huge, huge, you know, production delay right now. And so maybe they want to make sure that more people have the PS5s in their hands before even announcing such a game. Because that would Do suck, we know? right? That would suck if it's like, great game yes. coming out. You can't play. You can't play it. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we know, T, whenever we can expect to be able to walk into a store and just buy a PS5 off the shelf? No. So like don't. not for 2021, like we could be going the whole year being a scarcity of this console. The last thing I heard is that AMD is having um, massive issues producing the, getting the raw materials to produce the uh, chip. That is needed okay. not only for the PS5 but also the Xbox. The newer Xboxes also use the AMD chip, and so there's some issues there. Um, so that that for me is like, oh, dang it, terrible. I know, but eventually, eventually we'll get that PS5. But for now, it's definitely a production issue. Can they still make The Last of Us even though we have the virus? I'm not sure what you mean. Yeah. Will we ever see Tess, Riley, or Sam? Do you think an unspoken presence throughout Ellie in part two? Um, she does reference them, I think, a couple of times. Yeah, she does. Yeah, but um, I don't really see them making a comeback. Mm -hmm. I don't. Riley, yeah. her kind of, she's kind of like filled her whole thing. Tess as well. Sam as well. I don't see any of them playing a role i think it's the easter eggs you know they have her pretty much the little thing for them do you think dodging and prone will be in factions too <laughs> i get that questions a lot <laughs> i hope so <laughs> um i did mention this on stream the other day uh because one of our players tofu that was playing was like she's like i keep pressing the dodge button there's no dodge um, <laughs> the, part two. Yeah. Uh, uh, the thing about that and you see it with the hit sticks right you know like the kind of latency lag uh doing melee is very difficult on network because of that natural latency lag that is there and so that makes dodging very difficult to um put in to, to make happen also there's issues with prone of camping and people just going to a very dark corner and going prone and just, and just sitting there with yeah. you know a, a rifle just waiting for someone to walk in front of them there is that yeah that's not to say that it's not gonna happen but they definitely need to have systems in place to um counteract the more right. strength positions that that could that could cause definitely um Halox says the editor position still hasn't been filled by the looks of it so it might be a while away maybe 
It's interesting. Don't know. I, I know they've they've had those positions up for a while. Oh, you mean COVID nineteen, Ash? Uh, it's it's not it's a it's not a uh, apocalyptic virus though. I yeah. I think it's far different. It's not even in the same realms of a cordyceps infection, so to speak. It'd be different if there was like a mushroom taking over people and piloting their bodies around. <laughs> and they'd yeah. be like, oh, maybe it's not sensitive, but this came out right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Prone is in COD, uh, Call of Duty multiplayer, though. It is. And it's probably why I don't play it. It's not the only reason, but I, I absolutely do not get into Call of Duty. It's a totally different feel. Um, I, I don't, I, I personally don't have the appeal of Call of Duty. I really don't. Like the massive responses over and over again, the ad nauseum, like so quick, it does absolutely nothing for me. I don't even, it doesn't even feel rewarding at all. It really doesn't. So yeah, that, that's my thoughts on it. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. So maybe final questions. If anyone has final questions, now is your time to send them our way. Final questions. Give them Final to us. questions. <laughs> Give us your final question. Then I will uh, I'm gonna get a link here ready. Uh, when are you uh, when are you gonna go live with your stream today? Wolf? I will be going live in approximately well on the hour, so 10 a.m. for me, the next hour that ticks. Wherever you are in the world, we'll be doing some death strandy. So about 37 minutes. Yes. Give or take. Nice. Let me get do, 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 do. and I'll get your YouTube channel link. There we go. Put it here. Here's the link to Wolf's YouTube channel. Thank if you, you so much. If you haven't uh, checked it out already, you should definitely do that. Yeah, I just want to take this moment also to say thank you, Wolf, for putting out such really just quality last of us part two thoughtful insightful videos uh i feel like there's just been such an absence of them which i was so surprised i thought there really would be just a huge amount and i was shocked when really there there wasn't um and i i honestly if i sit here and think about it who has put out the most quality last of us part two story videos it's got to be you i really, really? yeah i who else yeah. do you know that put out like so many you great videos i i my number is quite small really when it comes to like the story i put out you know okay. maybe four maybe four or five you know they're very long i will say this my videos are very long 28 minutes 36 minutes and 40 minutes it's like oof it's a big ask of people i understand it is it's a big ask um but well uh, thank you I, yeah. I wanted to say and and you know it's kind of you know you, um you mentioned that just saying that there's not many and I know we've talked about this before, but you know I go media dark for the for the Last of Us games, and and so here I am enjoying this experience, and then I, I come out of my little hobbit hole to peek around the world, thinking, oh cool, let's go talk about Abby, let's you know this is awesome, and then like you see that the world's on fire, and you're like, what in the world? So, you know, I thought there would be m many more channels like ours, uh, you know, kind of talking about the game, but I am grateful that it gives us an opportunity to come together and and to have a more intimate connection uh, with our shared passion and this community that we have. It's great. It's awesome. Silver yeah. lining. Absolutely. I agree. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you do. All right. Um, with that having said, do you have any final thoughts today? Wolf? Anything you want to say? Uh, oh, actually, I'm going to put your, uh, let me put your contact information up here real quick. Dang. All right. There we go. You can catch him on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Uh, if you're not on Twitter, we're both on there. You can send us messages. Uh, you can point things in our direction, or you can just be like, hey, I really enjoyed this stuff. Um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Fire Girl. That's awesome. Oh, look at that. Um, final thoughts would be, uh, I just, I, I'm grateful for this opportunity that we have, uh, you know, to monthly come together and, and talk about this game that we love. And uh, I love the give and take. I love always learning new things, seeing the way that you see the game. We have great comments. Uh, from our wonderful community. Great ideas. We heard several uh, concepts, um, questions that were asked that pitched uh, uh, different uh, plot ideas that it's just great to hear and share everyone's thoughts. Um, and uh, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting that we're pretty much able to talk for a whole 
hour at least on uh, the Rattlers, a, a, a faction that we only meet at the end. And you know, you're talking about the Roman Colosseum and crossing the River Jordan, and it's just there's so much to this uh, beautiful story that you just don't get uh, with your standard games. And uh, and I, I even hate to call them games because they've really transcended that. I think so. Yeah. They, anyway, just it's true. Thank they, you. They feel more than games. They do. Yeah. I, I'm glad you said that. Um, and that brings up actually a really good question. What faction do we tackle next? So I, what do you guys think? I want to uh, chat, put in what faction you want us to tackle yes. next. And then yeah. Wolf will put his uh, suggestion and then I'll put my suggestion. In. And we can all kind of collaboratively come up with an idea. It doesn't mean we're necessarily going to do it, but we're going to sure. try We're going to try to tackle them all at some point. Definitely. But what one are you guys chomping at the bit to hear more about? Absolutely. Put your thoughts in the chat right now. Type away yes. at your loud keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What do you want to hear? Firefly Dot says, Seraphites. Seraphites. <laughs> Thank you, Emerson. Thank you for that kind comment. I appreciate it. Thank you, Emerson. And much love to you. The Boston Hunters, M. Laxton says. Yeah. Boston. Flying uh, says, Fireflies. Pittsburgh, yeah. I know what you meant. Pittsburgh hunters. With all their shoes. <laughs> all the <those> shoes. <laughs> Pits Pittsburgh hunters. Sponsored by Nike. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, Jackson. Okay. Famous the Jackson Jackson. The Jacksonites. Uh, yep. Corey Caliber says Seraphites. The Seraphistos. So here's something I, I can announce because he did say that he would. So when we do Jackson, when we do the Jacksonites, uh, Jasper Gion will hop on with us and talk about the Jacksonites a bit with us. Awesome. Which, yes, he did confirm that, awesome. which is totally cool. You know, That's great. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. I was so glad that he was a guest at your latest uh, Strategist Sunday. Yes. That was great. He loves factions. He's like, he's like, and he he's such a cool guy. He was so thankful and he was just so appreciative. He's like, man, I really appreciate you taking the time. I'm like, no, thank you. For that. <laughs> this is so Absolutely. cool to play with you. You know, like for me, yeah, I was definitely fanboying and I felt really, yeah. really just stoked to play with him. And it's great. And um, it's that's one of the things that for me, one of the unheralded, uh, just un, like one of the best aspects of factions is the new players. And when they come in, they bring in this fresh perspective this fresh feeling you know for a game that's been out for eight years it's yeah. super cool to see it's super cool to see and it's something to be cherished the same way that you know it's going to sound weird but the same way that i feel like that parents when they are able to share like their favorite movie or story with like kids and stuff like that like oh this yeah. is like you know this is the game that we played back in the day you know even though it's like, it's like it's the same game it's like it's like you know eight years ago it's like yeah oh, i remember when i first played factions that you know which is crazy it's almost been a decade almost right. a decade crazy you know it's so cool to experience that with you know new players even after all this time so i love that i really do i do what's up casual thank you so much for being here oh no casual you're the best you're the best thank you cash yeah all of you guys. so jackson there, there's there's a good mixture of Pittsburgh, Jackson, and Seraphites. Man, that's that's good. No Very one, good no choices. one, no one wants WLF. No one wants. Uh, their no, Ravens. Javier. Javier does. Javier feels. Oh, there it is. WLF, WLF, WLF. WLF. Represent the wolves. We have a wolf, wolf vote. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Good to know. Good to right know. On. All right, uh, Wolf. What do you want next? I have no preference. I would simply say save the best for last. Like keep pushing. Whoever we think we're going to have the most to talk about, unless we want to have two sessions of talking about, mm -hmm. you know, certain factions where there's a lot of lore and a yeah. lot of different angles to approach discussing them. Mm -hmm. But really, I'm I'm happy to talk about whomever. I think the most to talk about is kind of a tie between the Seraphites and Jackson. Um, really, I do not the Fireflies, not the Fireflies. Well, there is a lot to talk about the Fireflies, but in Last of Us Part Two, I feel not. Oh, you're, you know what? You're right. You're right. You're right. You know, you're right. 
I mean, we can go for like the whole thing. There is a lot to talk about <clears throat> the fireflies overall, definitely. In Last sure. of Us Part Two, I uh, the thing about the Seraphites, I see so much potential with them. Yeah, we, we know that there was a lot more there that they cut that might be used for this Part Three, or might be used in Factions Two or whatever sure. it's called. They might be taking some of that story elements and putting in that. But there is so much there to talk about them. I find them a really fascinating group. So that's a lot to talk about. Jackson, there's just so much to talk about as well because so many of our most beloved characters come from that one. Uh, it, we just see so much of that world. So there's so much to talk about. Jackson there. would be a great one to talk about next month. Yep. And it's still, there's still so much going on there, right? I mm -hmm. mean, Maria's still alive. Tommy's still alive. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's a shell of himself, but he's still alive, you know? Yeah. Yep. That's a valid point. That's a valid point. It is. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, uh, Jesse isn't alive, but Jasper, the face model, is, and we can have him talk. There you go. <laughs> there you so go. I good. love it. It's good. Yeah. Great well, times, What, what man. group stayed at the university? Oh, you're talking about David's. Um, oh, the cannibals. Uh, well, David's cannibals. Yeah. And then the Fireflies left the university lab. So, yeah. Yeah. There's. Well, a lot of them got turned, too. Yep. That we find there. The, the bloater has a Firefly pendant on. That will actually, David's cannibal group would be a fun one at some yeah. point to do. Definitely. Yeah. That would, that, that's true. That'd be good. All right. Uh, I think we'll end it here. We will let you guys know once we reconvene and come up with next month's group. But thank you guys oh, so yes. much for just a super fun, uh, just great talk. I love being able to talk about this and process this Last of Us Part 2 game. It's not even just two. At this point, it's kind of the whole, just the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. like we, we're going to talk about Part 1 and Part 2 just as left a behind, last. Yeah, left behind. Yeah, left behind. It's just a Last <laughs> of Us story. It's just the, I call it the universe, which I don't like. It makes it sound kind of sci-fi-ish or, you know, kind of commercial cool. or whatever. But it's just the entire realm of The Last of Us is just so good. So much lore. So much. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. If you haven't checked out Wolf of Thorns, please do. Uh, I'll put his link in there. I'll put it in once again. So you guys have no excuse not to go check out his channel and subscribe. And he will be streaming in about uh, 26 minutes now. So check him out awesome. on Twitch. Thank right, you guys. guys so much. Much love. Until next time. Until next time. Yeah, what, what is it you say at the end of your videos? <laughs> uh, I'll catch you in the wilderness of the mental. That's right. All right. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Cheers.